Violet already knew what love was the moment she saw the brooch. Everything that Violet was trying to understand about the phrase, I love you, she actually got almost immediately. Just no real way to elaborate it to someone that she loved. Objects are that vehicle that allows humans to conceptualize abstract feelings like love into something more tangible. The accessory request from Violet might have come off as an indirect order or suggestion from Gilbert, but Violet chose to leave Gilbert's side on her own at this stand and felt something in her heart all by herself. She associated the word beautiful to this feeling because that word was presented to her at this time. As Viola got older and acquired more objects, the brooch that started off as just beautiful and a way for Gilbert to show his gratitude for Violet, even though he couldn't take her out of the battlefield and truly protect her, began to morph. After the war, the brooch was all she had physically left of Gilbert, and that unknown feeling of love started to creep into her heart. She got new arms that she couldn't really feel anything as a constant reminder of the failure to protect her love. The dog that Hodges gave her became an embodiment of the new life of serving by taking orders from customers via ghostwriting, and the ribbon is the string of fate that links her to those emerald eyes. And finally, the umbrella that she receives from the playwright is for making the impossible possible possible. For everything she acquires throughout the story, she has grappled with her past of killing for the sake of the major. She realizes that her actions take away the objects of love that others hold dear so much, but it's not the order from her major that lets her continue living. It's the letters that she creates for others that ties her to her purpose in life. The emotions that are bottled up inside us are punctuated and formalized by Violet as she turns truth into words that carry meaning long past the lifespan of the original. Original sender. The first letter I remember writing is from third grade, which was an assignment in class where we had to send a letter to a soldier that at that time was deployed in Iraq. I told him that I liked how pretty my little elementary school was and that I had picked the winning horse for the Kentucky Derby that year. Uh, I was in fact very wrong uh, as Bluegrass Cat got second place, but uh, I'm a perpetual liar and used to tell everyone I visited Antarctica to seem cool and fit in. And the soldier wrote back uh, a couple months later talking about his mundane life on patrols at that point, and how he had a farm back home, and in fact, Barbaro won, uh, which uh, I then subsequently threw away the letter, because this man thousands of miles away caught my little bluff. Back then, email and for sure texts weren't that big of a thing yet, so letters weren't really romanticized as much as now, and it wasn't until 11th grade that I got a personal letter sent to me for the holidays of a club that I was a part of, and I felt this feeling in my heart that uh, it swelled up in emotions from this piece of paper. That same feeling came back when I got a letter from my girlfriend at the time who wrote something handwritten after our first date that made me realize just how special words written for one individual can feel and I regret throwing out the one years prior. At every chance I got, I would uh, write a letter from that day forward for those that I cared about, the one I thought I couldn't love, the one I felt I loved, and the one I knew I shouldn't have loved. And these objects of characters strung together in words on a letter became a part of them if they chose to keep them around years after, like I ended up doing with the ones that I received. Now with a thousand different ways to communicate with each other, the effort and time needed to craft something like a letter is worth having, since the tactility of feeling the indents that the pen makes on some 8.5 by 11 is nostalgic to me and embedded with what could be described as love. But there are times that a, a letter is simply not enough. The final movie is the best representation of this as the letter is just a medium that allows people to convey their emotions across. So the medium can change as long as the message is received on the other end. Someone that is done lying to themselves who can speak directly from the heart can carry the same weight as a well-crafted letter. Due to the time crunch of the critical condition of the boy that uh, Violet wrote the letters for his family could not be applied for his friend Lucas and the telephone was sufficient to allow a final message to be carried over. Also, one of the big benefits of telephone is you can feel sarcasm or indentations of the voice. You can't fully get that with words or text. Gilbert didn't want to see Violet because of the pain that he caused her and the pain he gets from seeing her. And the movie does a great job of reinforcing this idea by having Violet's hair obscure part of the brooch that went from inspiring beauty to the only remaining part of Gilbert that is left to having Violet accept that she does understand a little about what love is. So much
much so that she grants Gilbert's wishes and uses the object that he made to carry those violet colored grapes for these victims of his crimes on the island to deliver her final letter to him. The once undeliverable letters that would have ended up in some storage like in the OVA that love was able to be reached and expressed to the recipient, the major. Just as Violet stated that words have an outside and inside similar to objects and the personification of these concepts into words give it physicality, which is visually represented in the shadows casted on Violet's last letter, showing the depth of the words. Thank you. I've been hoarding physical manga since 2020 on this uh, kind of like rush to get into physicals and physical media so I have something tangible to hold on to. Uh, and I know that unfortunately I'll probably get rid of most of them when I move apartments, but uh, I will try to create some kind of digital catalog of them so those same memories that I get from touching them uh, will still exist. And I thank you for watching this video and clicking on this video, even making it anywhere near this this far. Uh, this is completely different from the Hoseki videos that I've been putting out. Um, I was supposed to put this this video out in July as a tribute to Kyoto Animation, uh, which obviously got delayed. <laughs> and it was supposed to be linked, you know, with communication and that video that I did on translations for Chapter 96. But yeah, uh, if you did like this, uh, subscribe. I will do more of this, especially with the, I think the next one that I have is on Haruhi, on my favorite arc of that series. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.